Okay, today I want to talk about how to use Fetch to return HTML to the website. Now, I've done videos already on working with XML and working with JSON data, pulling it back, but I haven't done anything with HTML. So we'll talk about how that differs and some of the different things that you can do with it. Now, this page right here, what I've got it set up is when I click on it, it's going to do a fetch to the server. Okay, this is the web page. This is the HTML. You can see here we've got a header. It's got an H1 element in it and then the main element. Inside here, this is where we're going to put the HTML. Now, I've got two different versions of the HTML. One is an HTML file. So I'm going to do a fetch call to get this HTML file and bring it back. Another example, just with a different URL, it's going to bring back the same content, but I'm just using a node server to show that, yes, you can fetch it from a server instead of getting the direct HTML file. So I have this server running. Uh, I've got it set up so it's already listening on port 1234. There we have it. Uh, this is running. This is sitting on the server. So either way, I can fetch some HTML and then load it into the page. And I'm going to show you three different ways that you can do that. So in my script, I've got uh, DOM content loaded. Once everything's there, I'm adding a click listener to the body element. When I click on it, I call my function to get the data. These are the two different URLs that I'm going to use. One is on the same server. Now, if we look over here, we can see that I'm on port 5500. That is just the live preview port from uh, VS Code right here. I've got this running on port 5500. So that's the server where my HTML and my JavaScript are running. All I have to do here is say that I'm going to be fetching a page from the same directory on the same server. We'll start with this one, just the plain HTML file. They're both sitting in the same directory on the server. My browser has this HTML file. We're going to get this HTML file. So we set up a request object. We do our fetch. When it comes back, now this is the first difference. Normally, when you were dealing with JSON, you would do response.json. Then that would extract the contents of the file and convert it into a JSON object. Here, I don't want JSON. I want the actual raw text. Now, there isn't an HTML method or an XML method. What we have is text. We have to then take that text and turn it into HTML to put onto the page. The main element, this is up here in our body. This is the main element where we're going to put our content. So I get a variable that refers to that. And the first version, the quickest, easiest way to do this, we can just do this where, sorry, I've got text. That's what I want to do. So text is the variable that's being sent to my function in response from this method right here. So this is going to come over to the next then. Text is going to be the data that's returned from the previous then, and that will be the text content. Now, because the text content is an HTML string, I can do this. And I mean, this is quick, it's easy, it's one line of code. The only downside to it is it's a little bit uh, less performant, but this will work. So we can take a look at the page and make sure it's refreshed. When I click on this, there we go. I have the content. If we take a look inside the elements, inside of main, sure enough, there's the div, there's the h2, and here's the ul with all the items. So this was the content. If I refresh and open up main again, you can see there's nothing there. I click. There we have it. We've loaded that inside there. So that works. And if you just need to do something quick and dirty, great, that's going to work fine. Now, the second version, this is where we get into the actual uh, parsing engines. So you can take strings and turn them into the objects themselves without having to just directly do this. This way, I'm getting the whole thing. Whatever's in that file, that's what's being stuffed inside there. So if you need to do any sort of... Um, manipulations on the content, if you need to extract bits and pieces of that content, this is not going to work for you. So, alternate versions. Let's take a look at the next one. There we are. So, there is a DOM parser object. This object has one method that we want to use called parse from string. So, you create a new DOM parser object, and then you call its parse from string method. You pass in the string that you want to turn from text into some sort of element, and then you supply text slash HTML. 
you need to put some sort of MIME type here. You can use this for XML, you can use it for HTML, you can use it for um, even JSON if you want. You can do application slash JSON and it will turn it into a JSON object. Uh, next thing we can do is uh, with SVG. So you can do an X, uh, text slash SVG plus XML, I believe is what the uh, MIME type is for that. And you can get an SVG object that you could then turn in turn put on the page. So with this one, we're going to be getting a document fragment. That's what we're going to uh, write out here, or a document object. And then this is like a brand new HTML file. So we're creating this new document. That's what this DOM parser is doing. It's going to take this whole thing and say, oh, okay, you've got a brand new HTML document. Now, from the document inside of it, if you think about any HTML file, there's a head, there's a body, there's other elements inside there. So we need to go into the body element and then retrieve this. This will be the div with all of the content. So right here, this div that's going to be the first element because that DOM parser, what it's going to do is wrap around this with a body element and then there's going to be an HTML element around that. It has created a brand new document. Once you have that div, that's what the content is, or we can call this div, if that uh, makes it a little bit easier to understand, then we can append the div to the main element and it's going to do the same thing as we had before. It's empty, we click, and there it is. There's the div that's been added with the other content. There's the document object. That's what we are console logging out here. This doc is the result of the DOM parser parse from string. It is an actual document object and you can see it has all the things that any HTML document would have. And you can start drilling down inside of here, find the document element, you can find the body, all those different things. So here's the body element. Okay. The final third one I'll comment these out again third version is a little bit newer than the DOM parser but it's another great way to do it instead of creating an actual HTML document what it's going to do is it's going to create a uh, document fragment so a piece of HTML that you want to put into the page so it skips the step of having to create the whole document and just says you know what I'm just going to build a piece of HTML that I want to be able to stick inside the page or I can also do things like this, where I can interrogate it. I can pull out bits and pieces using a document fragment. It's almost the same as any node that you'd find in a node list. So document, create range. A range is just, think of a web page that you're looking at and you can click and drag to select a chunk of text. That's a range. You're getting a range that you're creating inside the page. So I'm going to be able to insert something and the thing that I'm inserting is a contextual fragment. So we're creating a document fragment inside of our current web page, which is the document. Text, that's the argument that we passed in here. That was the content of that file. So this is still is a string. So we pass the string to do this. This will create a document fragment. and then we append that. It's just like we did before. So take a look at the elements inside of main, nothing there, we click, and there we've done it now. We've added the same content that we did the other two ways. So we have three, th three different ways of doing it. Best performance is likely, in most cases, going to come from the uh, creating contextual fragment. Uh, a little bit worse is going to be the DOM parser because it has to create the entire document and then you have to extract things out of the document to put them into the page. And then the least flexible is the inner HTML. That's going to take the string, it's going to convert it, it's going to stick it inside. It's going to do something similar to this, it's just not quite as performant and it's not quite as flexible. It's still text and we can't... Um, extract pieces of it. We can't work with the, the text. We have to wait until it's added to the page and then we can start working with it, which may not be what you want to do. All right, so I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. In the description, I will leave a link to the source code for this HTML file as well as for the server. I'm not going to bother with the HTML file because 
right here. This is the content, whatever's inside the string here. That's the content of this HTML file. All right, as always, thanks for watching.